welcome. It's Wednesday, which of course means it's theme park news time. And first up, some good news. Disney is happy to report that they've been making shed loads of money. Well, they didn't quite say it like that. Disney CEO Bob Chapek revealed that Disney's collection of theme parks posted the second best quarter earnings of all time. That's big. Revenues in Q1 of 2022 doubled compared to last year, up to 7.2 billion US dollars. Bob, unsurprisingly, was quoted saying, I could not be more pleased. Wow, <laughs> thanks Bob. Other theme park operators have recently had similar stories too. No doubt the collection of rides intended for Disney's parks anniversary celebrations will bring in even more guests too. Disney is far from the nicest theme park chain, however. That award seems to go to Hersh End. Hersh End Enterprises, the operator of theme parks such as Dollywood and Silver Dollar City, has announced that they will cover 100% of tuition fees for their employees that are considering further education. That offer is available to all seasonal, part-time and full-time employees across the operator's US attractions. The investment is being made through Hershen's new Grow You program, which CEO Andrew Wexler claims is not only a significant and transformational investment in our employees' growth, but also our love culture in action. What a fantastic piece of heartwarming and genuinely nice news. I mean, you don't hear stuff like that very often. Over in Europe, some cool things are happening too. Bear with me here. Oh God. Um, <laughs> Sarkanime. Wow. Whatever it is, Finland's second busiest theme park has big news. A 100 million euro expansion plan. The park currently has a collection of large scale rides, including a premier ride Skyrocket 2 and an intimate suspended coaster. In 2019, they attracted roughly 700,000 guests, but they plan to attract even more. Before COVID, the park set out a multi-year expansion plan. This would see the construction of multiple indoor attractions and experiences, a new restaurant, an entertainment boulevard, and a new hotel and water park complex. With these large investments, the park aims to become a resort, one which is capable of operating, at least in part, all year round. Fortunately, they have plans to invest within the park itself. A new family roller coaster, horror experience or dart ride are all being considered. The expansion was put on hold during COVID, but two years later, it's back on. The park confirmed that construction of the expansion will begin after this summer, with the first stage opening in 2023. Other parks around the world are getting big new expansions too. Two years ago, Niagara Amusement Park in New York, formerly Fantasy Island, permanently closed. That was until it was leased by Gene Staples, the savior of Indiana Beach. Fast forward to a few days ago, and the park confirmed that they are adding a new roller coaster. Not just any new roller coaster, a new Schwarzkopf roller coaster. Not just any new Schwarzkopf roller coaster, a Schwarzkopf shuttle looping coaster, complete with a flywheel launch. In fact, Niagara Amusement Park will soon be home to the original Laser Loop located at Kennywood back in the 1980s. How amazing! The park tweeted an image of the ride's track on their Twitter account, stating that they hope to begin construction as soon as the weather cooperates. Cotterland Amusement Park in Texas is also getting a new attraction too. Sky Blazer, a first of its kind amusement ride, will be coming to the park in 2022. The ride is part sky coaster, part giant frisbee. Guests will be hoisted to a high point above the ground before swinging towards the floor aboard a large circle. Very cool. Unlike the Sky Coaster, the ride features traditional amusement ride restraints, offering a more comfortable experience for guests. And finally, Sesame Place San Diego has an official opening date. SeaWorld Parks have announced that their newest theme park will open on the 26th of March. Unsurprisingly, it will feature a multitude of Sesame Street theme rides and attractions, becoming the only Sesame Place location on the west coast of the United States. And there we have it. Another week of theme park news done and dusted. Perhaps we're also one week closer to Bob spending some of that big money on some of the worst off Disney theme parks. Just think, maybe if they stopped churning out figment popcorn buckets, they'd actually have time to install something 100% completely new at Disneyland Paris. <laughs> Won't happen though. <laughs>